yes, when you are diving by yourself in a prototype submersible to the bottom of the Atlantic where no one had ever gone before, I could admit a bit of anxiety. Surface, LF, depth, one, zero, nine, or two, eight meters at bottom. The technological challenge was to design and build a submersible that could do it repeatedly and safely. And we also wanted to be able to have two people inside of it so I could have a pilot and a scientist. It's getting there it is. That is the bottom of the Philippine Trench. This is the deepest part of the Philippine Trench. We're showing a raw depth of 10,045 meters. Third deepest place on the planet. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank Congratulations. you, Richard. The design of the submersible is such that the 90 millimeters of titanium in case the two occupants in a capsule that stays at a constant one atmospheres. So it's actually more comfortable for your body than even going into a jet line. It still gets cold because it's a steel ball and it chills down to the near freezing temperatures of the deep ocean. The first major deep that I did was the bottom of the Atlantic. No human had ever done that. So that was quite intense an experience. We made the deepest dive in history according to Guinness World Records. I've now dived the most times to the bottom of the ocean, the Challenger Deep. I've done it now 12 times. Congratulations. We're the first people to the bottom of the Red Sea. Amazing. Now when you see it on the map, you can go, I've actually been to the bottom of that. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Just recently, we did the deepest wreck dive in history in the Philippine Sea to the wreck of the USS Johnston. And of course, going to the bottom of all five of the world's oceans. No one had ever even tried it before. Look at that. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How it like, looks like a wave coming in? Yep. So we discovered just on the Five Deeps expedition at least 40 new species. We mapped over a million square kilometers of new seafloor, which had never been done before. We discovered so many new undersea features. So, so there were just a lot of things that we did in terms of science and sampling the water, the water column, over 400,000 different animals were captured. And because we've explored so little of the ocean, and in particular, the deep oceans, which are very hard to get to, we don't really know how they function. So with our own expedition, we were able to get millions of meters of water data from the very top to the absolute bottom to understand its salinity, its temperature, its content, so that we hopefully can build better climate model. There is years of scientific analysis and articles being written. What is that? Uh, I think it's a plastic bag. Yep. It's going through. There's a cup. Oh, Coke can. No. Yeah. This is, this is like the worst I've seen, actually. It was very much of a psychological gut punch because here I was in maybe the most remote place on the planet in incredibly harsh conditions, and it looked very pristine, and then out of the corner of my eye, I saw the sharp angle of what was obviously human contamination. So it was just very unfortunate. I've actually found scientific debris in the trench. There is routinely a great deal of contamination. And people think that if you throw something into the ocean that it will just degrade or vanish. Nothing of the kind happens. In fact, the deeper it goes, the more it's preserved because there's no light and no oxygen. So people need to understand that the ocean is not a large land. Getting there was very difficult. It was extremely bad weather, as it always is down there. And no one had ever even remotely explored that area of the world, or much less dived a man submersible into it. And during the dive, I lost all communications with the service because of the temperature differentials in the water. And so I had to make the decision to keep going down or not, which I did. And when I got to the bottom, I felt like I was on another planet because I was in such a remote place without communications, looking at a place no human being had ever seen before. So that was an extraordinary experience. 
my own financial resources are adequate for what I have been doing, but I'm not a billionaire. And it's no secret that I'm actually trying to sell the system to a government or a well-endowed institution or organization of some kind. And what is surprising is how little interest I have. Human beings should strive to do that, to experience all that you can and not limit ourselves.